Coming up in the news tonight, public school repairs topping the agenda on Grand Bahama. An update on the country's unemployment situation as a result of COVID-19. And food supplies being distributed by a fraternal group. The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, starts now. This is the Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening, all. I'm Megan Shepard. Thank you so much for tuning in. Topping news, over $4 million being invested in repairs to public schools on Grand Bahama. Fifteen local contractors signing contracts today at the office of the Prime Minister in Freeport, and repairs are set to begin immediately. The Education Minister was on hand to speak to the various contractors. The ministry is looking, to for looking forward to all schools being in tip-top shape when school reopens in September. Jay Philippe has the story. Fifteen schools on Grand Bahama slated for major repairs. Minister of Education, the Honorable Jeffrey Lloyd, traveling to Grand Bahama for the contract signing ceremony. He was joined by Minister of State for Disaster Preparedness, Management and Reconstruction, the Honorable R.M. Lewis, and Senator Quasi Thompson, Minister of State for Grand Bahama. Minister Lloyd noting that the government has committed $4.5 million to school repairs and they are hoping that all the institutions will be ready for the new academic calendar year. We expect that this work begins immediately and we have every confidence because of the extraordinary capability and commitment and dedication of the members whom we have chosen and have been selected to carry out this work that the schools will be ready well in advance of the September school start time. Minister Lloyd stating that repairs to the physical structures are a priority and notes that unlike previous years, some major adjustments will be made. There will need to be additional uh, hygienic outposts, spigots, bathrooms uh, adjustments, because we need to, of course, ensure that our students maintain the hygienic standards that are required in order for us to ensure that at least from the educational standpoint the spread of this uh, coronavirus is not facilitated. The Minister of State for Disaster Preparedness, Management and Reconstruction, the Honorable Aram Lewis, assuring that quality is the goal when it comes to these projects. These contracts I guess represents the largest reinvestment in terms of, re of school reconstruction in the history of Grand Bahama and that is in part to the vast destruction experienced by Dorian. Dorian exposed a lot of weaknesses and as a result of that we will make best efforts to correct all of those weaknesses that were exposed. Once repairs are complete, Minister Lewis notes that the schools would also be used for hurricane shelters. Initially the gymnasiums were our focus for hurricane preparedness and shelters. However, we're now shifting to the classrooms. So we are sure that you will make best effort under strict supervision, following strict specification to ensure that these are done in a timely manner, not only for the opening of the school year, but in terms of hurricane preparation, putting our people in a position where lives can be saved and health preserved. Repairs are expected to start immediately. Minister for Grand Bahama, Kwesi Thompson, says these projects, 15 in total, will create more job opportunities for Grand Bahamians, which he says is a major focus of the office of the Prime Minister. Over $4 million worth of contracts, work, jobs for Grand Bahama. Um, it is absolutely necessary that post Dorian and while we come out of this COVID uh, experience, that we continue the effort to rebuild the economy of Grand Bahama. I'm Jay Philippe, ZNS, Network News. 
Also from education, a video of conditions at the Grand Ski All Age School is making the rounds on social media. A resident of that community, Craig Cephas, making a plea for work to be done at the school, which he says was damaged by the recent storm. Cephas giving credit to the new owners of the Walker Ski Resort for making repairs to the roof, but he says windows and doors must be fixed. We spoke with the district superintendent of education for Grand Bahama and the Keys, Ivan Butler. He says he is aware of the video and gives this update. I can assure you that um, especially what happened today, um, the contractors in a better position to now travel to Grand Bahama or to the U.S. and get the necessary materials and to, to, to carry out the repairs. And so we are not satisfied that we were, but considering what has happened over the last three months, you know, it was uh, very difficult for persons in such a remote area to get supplies. So the situation that happened was due to lack of supplies for the school in Grand Key. But we are sure, uh, we are confident that, um, that the situation up there will be repaired in short order. Butler says he spoke to the school's principal who assured that the school was secured for the most part. He says since then, the contractor was able to secure materials and supplies to complete the repairs. And, uh, the travel between the islands have been allowed, so the contractor has already made um, several trips to Grand Bahama to get the supplies, and so we're, we're confident that that situation will be rectified in, a, in the quickest time possible. And so we are pleased that um, parents are taking the initiative to report whatever's done, but know that we're doing everything we can considering the circumstances to address that situation. Now, the current condition of public schools was one of the concerns expressed by an executive of the Bahamas Union of Teachers on Grand Bahama. In an interview with our Italia Hall, BUT's area vice president outlined several other issues that he said should be given priority in the public school system. Due to the emergency orders, all schools were closed in March, all in an effort to slow the spread of COVID-19. But as the country moves into phase four of the government's reopening plan, some activity is now allowed to take place within the education sector. As a result, the area vice president of the Bahamas Union of Teachers, Quinton LaRota, says teachers have been asked to report to work. We know that according to the emergency order, the permanent secretary can identify uh, workers in their department as essential and ask them to report to work for, for duties. And so there's a circular uh, requesting the teachers report to work um, to sort of close the year off and to, and to do uh, report cards. He says the union's concern was the health and safety of teachers at the schools. And present a health hazard uh, for the teachers as they return to work. We are aware that the COVID-19 don't live for three months, so we don't expect it to be alive on the surfaces in the schools. If, they, if, if it was ever there in the first place. But what we are aware that if teachers return to school, there has to be some plan in place, the same that's executed in the stores and banks, uh, social distancing, hygiene, mask. The place must be set up in a way or things arranged in, in a way where they don't uh, potentially transmit the COVID uh, if anybody has it. It was announced recently that the BJC and BGCSE national examinations will be held on July 13th. Now, there's been some controversy surrounding this topic, as some claim that the exams may be a challenge for some students, as they have been out of school for three months. While the area vice president says the president of the union is speaking with the Ministry of Education about that issue, and as for the teachers in Grand Bahama, he is now in the process of gathering their views. But the area vice president says his main concern is that the 2020 Atlantic hurricane season began on June 1st and some schools have still not been repaired on Grand Bahama. Dark Haywood High School and Hugh Campbell and, and some others, they still have top on their roof. We we're basically we're in the hurricane season and if a hurricane was to hit and those repairs are not completed, you're talking about devastation on top of devastation and those students would be set back even further. This would have been after missing so many classes for, for, for Dorian. Then the COVID-19, and a God forbid another hurricane to hit, 
with, 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 with buildings that are not repaired, you, you're looking at um, a, a significant loss of time and, and education again. He is calling on the powers that be to make the necessary repairs. We don't want uh, those schools that are not repaired to be hit again. Uh, you're talking about another educational disaster. Uh, I know that there have been um, some things happening with virtual learning, but that still uh, cannot replace um, the in-classroom uh, interaction between the teacher and the student. And we know that is the more ideal situation, and so we always would fight for the ideal. Italia Hall, ZNS Network News. Now, as you would have seen at the top of the newscast, contracts in the amount of $4.5 million were signed today with 15 local contractors for repairs to 15 schools on Grand Bahama. The budget debate continuing in the House of Assembly today. During the afternoon session, the Minister of Public Service and National Insurance gave an update on funds already paid to approve applicants during this COVID-19 pandemic. The Minister of Public Service and National Insurance, the Honorable Brenzel Rohl, noting that the National Insurance Board has been working in overdrive for the past few months. First, following the devastation caused by Hurricane Dorian and now the global COVID-19 pandemic. He says it is estimated that more than 40,000 Bahamians have either lost their jobs or have had an interruption in their income. The benefits provided by this Social Security program has rescued thousands of workers with income replacing benefits when they desperately need it, Mr. Speaker. A few months prior to COVID, NIB was grappling with the aftermath of Hurricane Dorian. No one could have foreseen the economic devastation that would be visited upon this country by a major hurricane like Dorian. And then I'd be had to be ready to deal with the consequence in terms of benefit payments. Minister Roll also gave an update on the funds paid out to approve applicants thus far. And so, Mr. Speaker, 24,000 plus applications have been approved and paid. 24,000 applications amounting to $38.1 million. The duty of NIB during this period I said earlier was to work as quickly as possible Provide, the, provide funds to these individuals as quickly as possible. He says self-employed persons such as hair braiders, cab drivers and beach vendors were also able to benefit from payouts. Every single person who identified themselves as being self-employed had an obligation or had the ability to go to NIB to claim for this assistance offered by this government. Think about that, Mr. Speaker. Think about that. These individuals, 6,763 of them, took up the challenge. They went to NIB. Apply. They were approved. We made 24,059 disbursements to them. We paid them with the government's money nine plus million dollars. Now, Minister Rule addressed a vexing issue where some employees sought to claim a national insurance benefit only to find out that their employers had not been making contributions on their behalf. We may also made the commitment that we have to go after those employers who 
and in short, cheated their stuff. And so the director of NIB has already taken the position that adjustments will be made in compliance, that we will go after these companies expose them. Going forward, Minister Roll says that employees will be able to track their contributions online. We will be able to provide the employees with the ability to go online and track their payments. Make sure that when monies are deducted from their salaries, they could themselves see that the money has been applied to their account in NIB. On the issue of unemployment, Grand Bahamas industrial sector hasn't been spared from the fallout as a result of the global pandemic. Late last month, 37 employees were laid off from the Freeport Container Port. Of the 37 separated staff, 31 were line staff and 6 were supervisors. The majority of the laid off workers were employed in engineering and terminal operations. Prior to the termination at the container port, there were layoffs at the Grand Bahama shipyard, 27 positions to be exact, and management of the shipyard maintains that those redundancies were connected to the global COVID-19 pandemic. Among those affected, engineers and multi-purpose operators. Reports say no further layoffs are expected at the shipyard at this time. Good afternoon, I'm Pastor Calvin Parker, of Grace Communion International Freeport. The COVID-19 virus that plagues the world is real. For all of us, it is a life-threatening prospect. Many are unemployed and are fearful about the protection of their families and the loved ones. The good news is that we do not have to fear or to be fearful because there is hope. There is hope in God, because God is love. Everything our Creator does flows from the love He has for us. 1 John 4 and 7. God is with us even now during this global crisis. Hence, in this moment, we can face these days of fear with renewed worship, rededicated service, friendship, work, and love. We can love one another and be kind to one another, Ephesians 4 and 32. So let us put our faith in God and come before him ready to receive his help. Let us be a people of hope, a hope that is invested in the creator God of the universe, who has extended himself on behalf of his children. A God who will not leave us alone in our affairs. A God who will carry us through this global crisis. The Lord is in control and always will be. He is the one who sets the universe in motion and will make good on his every promise. He is worthy of our trust and he can help us in conquering our affairs. John 16, 33 says, be of good cheer, says the Lord. I have overcome the world. Let us pray for those affected by this global crisis in worse ways than ourselves. For our leaders and for men and women working on the front lines, let us pray that we'll be willing and ready to sacrifice our own good for the good of others. Amen. Members of a fraternal organization going door to door. Find out why when we come back. of the news is brought to you by Dolly Madison, Freeport's original home center. Hi, I'm Wes. I like to put some shoes on your feet. Hi, I would like to put some shoes on your feet. Hi, 
I want to put some shoes on your feet. I want to put some shoes on your feet. Congratulatory greetings to 2020 graduate Dionne Finder from your mom, dad, sister, brother, grandmother, aunts, and uncles, cousins, and friends. Continue to do well as you now set out on your second journey. Show your dad some L-O-V-E love. Shop at Esquire Men's Freeport. Up to 50% off June 15th through 20th. Open until 7 p.m. all week. Congratulations to head girl Malaysia Bain, 2020 graduate at Walter Parker Primary School. From your parents, Herbert and Vinnie Rowe, grandparents, Pastor Pedersen and Judith Ballou, including Auntie Yoki and Uncle Ijo, great-grandparents Horatio and Hazel Ballou, and the rest of your family and friends. This is a different kind of world. We cannot sit next to our pairs or have family and friends embrace this moment. In this rapidly changing world, we stay focused. We compete together. We celebrate, celebrate together. We are warriors. Number one news team covering the North. The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Welcome back. A fraternal organization seeking to better the lives of persons who are feeling the economic pinch as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Kiki Zuki Court, organizing a food distribution drive in several neighborhoods in the Freeport area. Members and volunteers going door to door taking food parcels to those who are unemployed or are finding it difficult to make ends meet. Illustrious commandress of Kikizuki Court, Pamela Lang, leading the charge. Former commandress Mary Delavo was among the many volunteers. They came together as a group to give back in the community. We know that a lot of persons have lost their jobs, a lot of families are not working. So we took it upon ourselves today to put some care packages together for each as much family as we possibly can today. We know that our mandate is all about service. It's not about sitting in the four walls, but it's about going out there and making our presence felt. Let us continue to do our best to lend a helping hand wherever we can because we know a lot of places out there are hurting. We are praying and hoping that each day goes by that as the curfew lift, things can get better and better and people can be smiling and be much happier. The Rands Memorial Hospital also benefiting recently from the generosity of others. The healthcare institution receiving over $25,000 worth of medical equipment, including personal protective equipment kits, bed pants, and medical tubing. The donation was a collaboration between Ebenezer Foundation and Friends of Grand Bahama. We linked up with the Ebenezer Foundation here, and we brought over uh, a lot of uh, PPE, brought over uh, gowns, masks, and uh, a lot of uh, a lot of other medical supplies for the hospital here in Freeport. It's important to to, to sustain uh, uh, the the need for the hospital here for for all the Bahamians. It's it's unfortunate what happened. It's uh, that, that hospital was affected badly. I, I'm, I'm very I'm fully aware of it, and. Uh, and we've been trying to uh, uh, supply them with uh, what they need. We partnered with uh, Global United, uh, with Interval, and with um, Global Aid uh, to be able to provide desperately needed PPE to various islands in the Bahamas. Kenneth Cadam says his team has been visiting the Bahamas on a regular basis and they have been able to establish business contacts. He says that is why he felt compelled to provide immediate assistance to the hospital. He adds that donations began last year following the devastation caused by Hurricane Dorian. Dell has been a, a infrequent resident of the Bahamas for many, many years, and we see it firsthand uh, how ne needed they were. So obviously the Bahamas were our first choice of, of where to bring it to. 
Uh, we just donated uh, roughly 30,000 U.S. dollars worth of supplies to Grand Bahama. Uh, we have another shipment right behind it that should be leaving this week to go to Nassau, which is of equal value, if not a little bit more. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Don't go away. Don't go anywhere. Check out all the new things you can do now in the Live app. More ways to pay, still connected, alive. Look, it's simple. Fidelity can consolidate all your bills for their debt consolidation loan. Give you one monthly payment and money in your pocket. So let me get this straight, Miss Financial Coach. You say something about cash in my pocket? Yes. And a savings plan with 5% interest? Wow. Finally, a bank that's looking out for me. What do you want me to sign? That's not all. We also offer competitive interest rates and free financial coaching. That's why the LD, you ain't in me. Well, do I sign? <laughs> Here at Mulligan's, we sell a wide variety of products. We sell meat, we sell produce, we sell grocery items, household items, general merchandise items. We also sell over-the-counter drugs. At our restaurant supply store in Mulligan's, we have baking ware, baked goods. We offer for the professional baker, we offer for the home baker. In today's economy, we find that many people are now turning to home baking and cooking, and we try to service that market. We also have available a wide range of spices and blends. Our meats are the best on the island. You can ask any of our customers. We have customers who come specifically to buy meat only at Mulligan's. Our store hours at Mulligan's are Monday through Saturday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and on Sunday from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. You can also find us on Facebook or you can contact at our email, goodspice at hotmail.com. Congratulations to 2020 graduate, Valicia Hart of Tabernacle Baptist Christian Academy. Lots of love to you from your parents, Wilton and Sophia, brothers, sisters, family and friends. Continue to excel beyond the stars. Number one news team covering the North. The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Tonight, we want to say a special hello to Nikki Bain. She is our Facebook friend of the night. Thanks for watching, Nikki. Well, that's going to do it for us here in the North, but be sure to stay tuned as the Bahamas tonight continues. On behalf of the entire news team, I'm Megan Shepard. Have a safe and wonderful evening.